<laughs> the last note was the wrong one? Yeah, that fingernail got caught. Oh, well. Your fingers were as sore as mine. <laughs> what are you thinking about now with this, this last time here? What's on your mind? Well, I hate to see it happen very badly, but it's progress, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, this is the theater I met my husband that played here for two decades. Mm -hmm. This is where we courted on the front row. And I was very honored that they asked me to be the last to play the last note. Approximately 150 teachers of the Classroom Teachers of Dallas gathered this afternoon in the auditorium of Nathaniel Hawthorne Elementary School in South Dallas off Buckner Boulevard. Their object was to object to the unification vote of the Classroom Teachers of Dallas with the National Education Association. They feel in that a straw vote of the teachers to deny unification was overlooked when the faculty representative voted 117 to 65 for the unification. I talked this afternoon with the chairman of a steering committee to fight the CTD NEA unification, Mr. Harley Pennon, and I asked him the object of today's meeting. Unification, uh, how many do you have to have today to consider this a successful meeting? Well, of course, we would have liked to have seen every school represented, which would mean we'd need at least 182 teachers to be present here in order to have a representative from each school. But uh, if we come somewhere close to that, we'll be happy. These teachers are objecting to a unification or merger of the classroom teachers of Dallas with the National Education Association. But according to today's Wall Street Journal, there is a bigger merger than that looming in the future. That is the merger of the National Education Association with the American Federation of Teachers, AFL-CIO, an out-and-out -out labor union. The president of the National Education Association, Mr. Donald E. Morrison, who incidentally was in Dallas last week pitching unification, said, and I quote, I think you'll see this come about within three years, meaning a unification of NEA and AFT. Teachers are getting fed up with fighting each other and having school boards play one group off against the other, unquote. On the other hand, the head of the American Federation of Teachers, Mr. David Selden, said, merger is inevitable. There will be a wedding, whether it's shotgun or not. So the issue of unification with CTD and the NEA may be only a start to another unification, NEA, with the AFT. This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. The emptiness of the council chambers this afternoon is in stark contrast to what happened in this morning's somewhat stormy session. About 350 persons, most of them firemen, filled the chambers to twice its normal capacity. The firemen were present to stage their own protest, but before representatives of the Firefighters Association were heard, the council took up the matter of the earnings tax. The council was due to vote today on an earnings tax charter amendment election, but Councilman Jess Johnston asked for a 60-day delay. Councilman Taylor Gandy, the strongest council opponent to the e-tax, made a motion to completely table the income tax proposal. The only reason for the delay is that the proponents don't have the required six votes. I would like to see at least three other members of this council join me in putting their earnings tax to bed in Fort Worth so we can discontinue our divisive arguments and get about moving Fort Worth forward. I therefore offer this motion as a substitute to the main motion that we go on record as agreeing not to bring up the earnings tax again. Councilman Gandy's motion was defeated by a four to five vote, but what was surprising was the fact that Councilman Watt Kimball and John O'Neill voted to table the matter, that's a direct turnaround from their votes two weeks ago. The motion to consider the income tax again in 60 days carried five to four, with Mayor Stovall and Councilman O'Neill, Gandy, and Kimball voting against. The other controversial subject that faced the council this morning dealt with hiring policies. The president of the Firefighters Association, Fire Captain John Murphy, with the backing of about 200 off-duty firemen, urged the city not to lower hiring standards for firemen. Five members of the council commended the fire department's operation and assured them there would be no lowering of standards. But Councilman Briscoe questioned Captain Murphy for about 15 minutes. Let's keep our voice down, please. Are you talking to me or him? 
<laughs> One of you speak at a time. Well, Mayor, I think we're going to have, we're gonna have order in the council chamber. We're, we're going to have order in the council chamber, and the councilmen will, will not raise their voices. Although some councilmen did say there would be no lowering of hiring standards for firefighters. After all was said and done, there was no positive action as far as a vote is concerned on the part of the council. Those who spoke wondered if anything was accomplished at all. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move in Fort Worth. The story out of the council session was not so much what the council did as it was what the council didn't do. The council failed for the third straight time to act on that much discussed Love Field passenger tax, which would be assessed on those travelers implaining from. In action that was taken by the council, approval was given to another land settlement for the Dallas Fort Worth Regional Airport. This time the settlement came to nearly a million dollars for about 196 acres of farmland, which averages out to about $5,000 per acre. In one other matter worth mentioning, it appears that some council members are interested again in the feasibility of combining county and city health services into a single department for reasons of greater efficiency. That was first proposed way back in 1947, but City Manager Scott McDonald told the council at its noon briefing that it appears the possibility for such a merger is greater now than ever before. Jack Hill, Channel 8 News on the Move. How many minorities are either Latin American or black or others that are in that department? Presently, yes, in the department, we have two. Two. Two blacks. Can you tell me specifically what your association has done to uh, help us to recruit minorities? Specifically, they haven't done anything just like everybody else. We've sat here and talked about it, but we want, we want to do something. This, is, this has been occurring for a number of years. We feel that CTD has failed to represent the Dallas teachers. In what way, sir? Well, in that the teachers voted against unification, and this voice was not listened to when the final FR vote was cast on May 2nd. Was this popular uh, straw vote, however, a non-binding vote according to the bylaws of CTD? Well, according to the later explanation, this was true. However, at the time that uh, many of us told our faculties and told them about the vote, we were under the impression that it was a binding vote and that it would settle the matter finally. The passenger tax was delayed for about two weeks in order that we might work further with the airlines and to try to determine how we're going to work out some of the real tough problems in it of collection. This does not mean, of course, that it will not be passed. We could still implement it by July 1st, which was the original date, assuming we can work out all the other things.
Oh, I think you're always interested in some proposition that somebody would come along with. I, I think it would be silly to say that we uh, wouldn't trade somebody. I think if we got a, uh, a deal going our way that we felt was going to strengthen our club, I think we'd do it. Would you give up any top flight pitchers for some good hitters? Well, I wouldn't like to give up any top flight pitchers, but again, uh, if, a, if, a, if a proposition was made that uh, you felt that uh, you could help a position as well as, say, get some pitching back, well, you might have to consider it. Dr. Nolan Estes, Estes and the school board have stood by and permitted, if not encouraged, that our young people be brutalized and mistreated physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We feel that Nolan Estes is not a man of goodwill, but rather it is our opinion that he is a political opportunist using the students in the public schools as stepping stones and succumbing to the desires of the oppressive and racist element of the power structure, thereby maintaining the status quo of Dallas, Texas, the All-America Plantation. With this and numer numerous other factors in mind, we heartily concur with the NAACP and its statement of May 17, 1972, and request the immediate resignation of Dr. Nolan Estes as the superintendent of schools in the Dallas Independent School District. Motion of calling a charter amendment election for July the 11th. No, no, it's not. It's <laughs> Have a showing of the hands of the eyes, please. Have a showing of the hands of the nose. Motion carries. It will be considered again in 60 days. And pro. No, it's well, a 60-day postponement. Uh, postponement from July the 11th. No, that wasn't a motion either. Don't believe me. 60.